This is Twit. All right, so we're speaking with Melissa Schilling, author of Quirky, a fantastic read. By the way, you can get it on Audible if uh, if if you want to listen to it. I did that as well as read uh, through the book. It it fit into my schedule perfectly, and the the read, by the way, on Audible is fantastic. Um, so really enjoyed the audio book. Uh, third characteristic we haven't really talked. I mean, we've 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 touched on the creative mind uh, a little bit, but. Let's dive into this a little bit. What is what is the difference? What is the line between intelligence and creativity? When it, I mean, uh, it's probably a very bl blurry line now that I think about it. But uh, talk yeah. about that a little bit. Yeah, that chapter also talks a lot about. Uh, it actually explains a lot of why we associate madness and genius together, which is pretty fascinating. So I'll start with the intelligence part. Uh, you know. And I, and I want to back up for a second. A, a lot of what's in this chapter was really revealed by studying Nikola Tesla very intensely. Because mm -hmm. Nikola Tesla had traits that it turned out all the other innovators also had. But he had them to such an extreme that you couldn't miss them. So there are things you notice in Tesla that you didn't notice in the others until you went to look for it. Uh, if, you, if you study no one at all, if, if you had to pick one innovator in this group to study, you'll probably pick Elon because he's so hot right now. But... Um, but you should study Nikola Tesla because he is the most extreme of the innovators and in some ways uh, a little bit broken, uh, clearly the most quirky. I'm going to, so I'm going to, I backed into this thing on intelligence. They were all very intelligent. That was very, very clear. They, they, a lot of them also had very distinct signs of what we would think of as a dopamine irregularity. So maybe a little bit of elevated dopamine or volatile dopamine. I mean, Nikola Tesla was flat out manic and had you know obsessive compulsive disorder. So he had some pretty extreme dopamine irregularities. But uh, having modestly elevated dopamine is really valuable for creativity because it it causes divergent thinking, and it also lowers latent inhibition, which means you don't screen out as much stuff, and you get more defocused attention, and you're incorporating more stimuli than you would normally. So we know that modestly elevated dopamine is related to creativity. And in fact, there was a really interesting thing that happened when I was doing this study. I started this, remember, in 2010. And one of my colleagues came to me and he said, did you hear that they discovered that when people have Parkinson's, it can open up a whole creative genius thing that they never knew they had. They might become artists or sculptors or whatever. And I thought about it for a minute. And and really quickly, I thought, it's it's not the Parkinson's, it's the levodopa they're giving them because levodopa is synthetic dopamine. And probably when they first get on this levodopa, they've probably got elevated dopamine. And, and sure enough, a few months later, they did another study and they're like, oh, it's the levodopa. But um, so I felt very vindicated in yeah, that. No but, <laughs> but this elevated dopamine, elevated dopamine also facilitates working memory and executive function. So this one neurotransmitter that uh, can enhance creativity can also enhance television, uh, television, intelligence and processing. So uh, they have an underlying common basis, right? And it's also the case that when you have uh, long working memory or or even good exceptional long-term memory, you'll follow longer paths of association. You, you are capable of following longer paths of association out. So for instance, Kimball Musk refers to Elon Musk, uh, his brother saying, you know, he's always thinking 10 steps out. So he's arriving somewhere that other people haven't even thought of yet, mm -hmm. right? And, and he turns out to be right. And you would see that he's right if you followed him all 10 steps out. And that's really facilitated by being intelligent. Now that doesn't mean that all creative people are geniuses or that all geniuses are creative, but it does mean that there are some common elements that help with both. Now, take that modestly elevated dopamine and look at what happens when you make it really extreme, you start getting things like schizophrenia, right? You get mania, you can get obsessive compulsive disorder, um, but uh, schizophrenia, uh, the positive affect schizophrenia, when people have word salad and, and they're gibbering and they are, they're hearing things, that's from having really, really elevated dopamine. So um, so you can see that connection. Now you can say families that have historically generated more creative geniuses have also historically created more schizophrenics. So we knew about that genetic link long before we understood the neurotransmitters that underlie that connection. Yet again, it, it kind of points to the fact that on some of these serial breakthrough innovators, they might have that characteristic, but it's it's almost like it's the perfect 
the perfect balance of that right. character, right? Too much, right. and you 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 venture into schizophrenia territory. Too little, and maybe they aren't as as driven to to be so creative and and wild in their thinking.